questions? We've got lots of questions. <laughs> okay. Can we get a microphone? Thank you. My question relates to the use of social media, and it is how do we ensure that people will hide behind anonymity, not destroy individuals or particular sections of the society where they express extreme views, and yet they're not brave enough to say who they are, and they hide behind, you know, crazy names and crazy acronyms. Well, um, I'll start by just saying simply there's two issues there. There's an issue of privacy, but there's the, the, the bigger issue, which is the most important, is that the negative comments usually outrun the, the positive comments. My personal opinion is that I think the best way we can do it is by having more positive comments. And then that we, we, the person that is hiding behind a negative comment uh, will just be, you know, minuscule in terms of, in terms of uh, uh, the positive comments that, that gets created. There, there's other answers, which is like technical, which is you know allowing people to flag, and I think SBS uh, gives you allows you to to flag people where they can you can make a comment disappear if it's extremely negative. But I I'm someone that advocates uh, having everything out open and out there, uh, but losing the lo losing the privacy could be an issue. So I, I'm not sure it could be a good idea. I think what we need to do is just be strong enough to say uh, let's let's be out there and let's fight. Let's fight that battle by being positive. So, you know, I, I don't mind. I think if someone wants to be a coward, let them be a coward. That, that's my opinion. Um, I could add to that, actually. Um, one thing that we did on the Every Australian Counts campaign was to, like, I'm an organiser, so um, I know that as an organiser, I can't um, go and keep telling all those, those stories or combating negative sentiments on my own. Um, when you're organising, you're actually kind of developing leadership within other people so that your organisation becomes stronger across the board. One thing we did on Every Australian Counts was we ran a competition to see, you know, who wanted to blog uh, at the first disability conference in 2011. Um, the people who won that competition went down to the conference and blogged from the conference, which was a nice activity to run. But those people, because their, their skill and their value in the community had been recognised, um, they have now gone on to be kind of champions for the campaign and work as effective kind of moderators um, through our social media channels. They're not always on message because I don't believe that humans are always on message. I think they're humans. And, um, but, you know, they are certainly advocates for um, the campaign and can deal with people in a really constructive way. I'm not sure I, I agree with open slather though. I actually think of social media and communities in social media as kind of, I think of them as physical spaces. And I think if a community is to thrive, it doesn't need to be trying to fight off um, negative sentiments all the time. So I think it's very much up to people who manage social media communities to um, share management, but also be very clear in what the community is about and what is allowed into the room and what is not. And I think um, if you go and have a look at a Facebook page that I think is really an interesting example of this is um, Destroy the Joint, um, which is a feminist space. Um, but they're very clear on what's allowed to be spoken about and what is not. And they have a very effective team um, that kind of builds, that works to build and nurture that community and not have everybody in that community feel like it's being torn apart all the time. I just like to thank everybody for a wonderful opportunity today to be here in this wonderful conference. I like to make a comment, and is how disappointed I am that after so many years we are listening again to the word. Um, oh dear, I lost it right now. What is it? Assimilation, because we I thought we have moved from assimilation to integration, which is acceptable, but assimilation is not. And I hope that is just something that has come into the lexicon today, but is not actually happening. That integration is what we are about. And that is my comment. My question is to Mandy Weeks. When are we going to have pop Latin or oh. pop Spanish? 
Don't I'm biased, that. very, very no, biased. Very and that would be our Spanish broadcasters putting you up to well, there. They are. <laughs> yes. I expect them to do it ASAP. Right, okay. So on that, um, our challenge is we, we're out of spectrum. So we have run out of digital spectrum at the moment. We've got um, the Arabi Desi and Pop Asia, and we've also got a chill station, which is international chill out music. Um, we do have our broadcasters put proposals to us from time to time. In terms of the World Cup, which is in Brazil next year, we will be doing a pop-up radio station, which will be around um, pop, pop Latino, so pop Brazil kind of music. So it will be part of our, the radio um, campaign for the World Cup next year. So there will be something. The other um, format, I guess, that I'm, I'm constantly sort of bailed up about is SBS Pop Africa uh, as, as another one that people would love. So, again, we're looking at that um, as something else that we should probably and would love to, to offer as well. Looking at the languages that you put out there, Spanish was number eight, higher than the Hindi. So I don't understand spectrums. I don't understand them at all. Spectrum, I don't know what that means. So I can't accept that as an excuse. <laughs> so I want the pop Latin as right. soon as possible, please. All right. Well, let me get your details and I'll email you when it's on because it'll be on next year. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Gentlemen. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, I'm calling this and actually I'm based in uh, Singapore. Um, in 1989 with Andrew, I was involved in organizing the first multicultural uh, media conference in Sydney. And more than 20 years <laughs> later, I'm here uh, because Andrew invited me. I happen to be visiting my family here. And we are talking the same issues. <laughs> Nothing much seems to have changed. And uh, now one of the, um, uh, it's a question I would put to Mandy. Um, now, one of the problems I found which made me move to Singapore was because uh, in the Australian media, when we talk about multicultural broadcasting, you need to have an Anglo-Saxon accent to be accepted as a professional broadcaster. And I can remember when SBS started the World View, I think World View program or something, the first English language program. The executive producer wanted to employ me as a full-time reporter. And by that time, for 15 years, I have been broadcasting on 2SCRFM in English. And I have won two mainstream awards, a UN Media Peace Award and an uh, Educational Award of the CBWA. But the head of news would not take me. I was uh, not seen as a professional broadcaster because I didn't have the Anglo-Saxon accent. And you face the same problem today. And you're talking about these music channels uh, SBS has uh, um, introduced. Why don't you uh, introduce an English language news and current affairs program to be entirely staffed by ethnic journalists who are already in SBS, who are broadcasting in other language, but they are uh, bilingual. Yes, Why can't they do yes, a, a full 24-hour news channel? Uh, by ethnic journalists, we we'll also that, educate <laughs> Anglo-Saxon journalists as yes. well uh, yes. uh, about Australia and the world uh, at large. But what is stopping you doing that? Well, I think you'll find actually, um, I think that's changed because if you come into the radio newsroom now, we certainly have broadcasters who are from Italian background, um, African background, South African background. So you are hearing all those accents. And in terms of the music stations where I sort of said the, the announcers are in English, speaking English, I mean, they're all of the origin, you know, that where the, form, the format relates to, absolutely. So, um, you know, they've all, all, a lot of them have accents and things like that as well. So absolutely, um, I, I, that's probably an issue where I actually do think we've moved on quite, quite a lot, and we do have a lot. So we'd be very happy to talk to you about, you know, the, the makeup of that. Okay, we might just take one more question. Okay. Um, thank you very much.